you, Lord, for this Sabbath. Give us courage to speak your word. Help, uh, help us to, to listen to your word and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath to you boys and girls at home and here in church. Last Sabbath, we were taken through a very, very interesting journey of Paul, moving all the way from one island to another, and finally ending up in Jerusalem. And while in Jerusalem, he was apprehended and met the very rowdy group of people. Mm. But before we continue with today's book, that is Acts chapter 22, I would like to introduce the guests who are here with us this morning. And to my far right is... Mike Momani. Tamara Mora. Tessie Bahati. We are yeah, the great three learners at Maxwell Adventist Preparatory School. Well said, and my name is Teacher Mary. Welcome once again. Today's theme is... Gospel in Chains. Well done, Gospel in Chains. So while Paul was in Jerusalem, apprehended, he was taken all the way up to the fort, from one step to another. And Paul decided to take heed to the orders of the commander. When he was a few steps away, Paul turned back and looked at the commander and requested to make a defense against his accusations. Hmm. Hmm. Tamara. Yes? Suppose you were Paul. What sort of defense would you make? I am indeed a Jew, born in Tarsus in Sicilia, but brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, taught according to the strictness of our father's laws, and was zealous to God as you are all are today. Well said, Tamara. Very good indeed. We have heard Paul spoke using certain language. Tessie, what sort of language do you think Paul used? Paul used Hebrew language. Well done. And why do you think Paul used Hebrew language? Paul used Hebrew language so that the people can know he's one of them. Very good. It was very important for Paul to have used Hebrew language so that the people there would know that indeed he was one of their kind. Hmm. Mike. Yes. There was a name mentioned there. What name was that? Gamaliel. Gamaliel, very well. And who was Gamaliel? Gamaliel was a respected man of the law, and he was the teacher of Paul. Very good. Therefore, it was very important also for Paul to have mentioned the name Gamaliel because he was very acquainted with, one, the Mosaic law, and two, the customs of the Jewish people. Well done, and well done indeed. Ma, would you tell us the next defense that Paul made? I persecuted to death the people who followed this way. I arrested men and women and threw them into prison. The high priest and the council can prove that I'm telling the truth. I received letters from them to fellow Jews in Damascus. So I went there and arrested those people and brought them back in chains to Jerusalem to be punished. Ah, well done. Sit down. Thank Good you. boy. Isn't it so sad to know that Paul arrested people and then took them all the way to Jerusalem to be punished? Oh, it's indeed very, very sad. Tessie. Yes? How are you? Fine. Good, Tessie. So, would you like to tell us more of the defense that Paul made? 
As I was traveling, coming near Damascus about midday, a bright light flashed from the sky. I heard a voice saying to me, Soul, soul, why do you persecute me? The people with Saul did not hear the one who was speaking to Saul, but saw the bright light. What shall I do? Get up and go to Damascus, where you will find what the, the Lord has determined for you. I was blind because of the bright light, so my companions took me by the hand and led me to Damascus. In that city was a man named Ananias, who was respected by all the Jews living there. He came to me and said, Brother Saul, see again. At that very moment, I saw again. I looked at him and he said, The Lord of our ancestors has chosen you to do his will, and you will be a witness to everyone who has heard and seen. Why wait any longer? Get up and be baptized. And at that moment, I went to the temple to pray back in Jerusalem. And as I was praying, I saw a vision. And in that vision, Christ was telling me to quickly move out of Jerusalem. Because people there were not going to hear what I was saying. And before Paul could finish, the mob started chanting and screaming, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! He is not fit to live. He is not fit to live. And the soldiers, kept on pressing so hard against Paul and pushing him further and further to the fort. And at that point in time, again, Paul turned and looked at the soldier who was there and requested to make just the last point. Tessie, yes. what do you think he said? He said, is it right for you to whip a Roman citizen? Well done. Mm. Was Paul persecuted? Was the crowd allowed to kill Paul? Was he thrown in a dungeon? Well, boys and girls, be sure to join us next Sabbath as we shall be looking at the book of Acts chapter 23. But for now, it's... Bye! Bye.